Alright, uh, hey everybody, welcome back to another online class. Uh, it's good to be back. So we have a few things to cover today. Uh, so obviously the topic under discussion is the Great Depression. And when I talk about the Great Depression, uh, for simplicity's sake, I like to divide up the causes, the underlying causes of the Great Depression, to three different categories. Uh, first, the stock market and financial fragility. Second, agri agricultural debt. And third, the distribution of wealth. So I could, I could talk about the Great Depression for a long time, and people who know more than me can talk about it forever. In fact, they do talk about it for their entire lives. But to keep things simple, we're going to focus on these three aspects of the Great Depression. So for this video, we're actually just going to focus on the stock market, the first of the three reasons. So first, what is a stock market and what is a stock? So I hope everyone has already watched the small, short, uh, very simple video that I posted uh, previous to this video. So you guys should have a pretty good idea of what a stock and a stock market is. Uh, but we're going to talk a, a little bit about how a stock market works, uh, how it works, and then we're going to talk about something called stock market bubbles. So that's going to be a new concept. new concept. Stock market bubbles. And everyone loves new concepts, right? And then we're going to finish this video by talking about uh, just listing a couple of reasons why stock market bubbles occur, which will we, and we will continue that conversation in class. Uh, there we go. So first, value. What determines the value of a company's stock? So uh, the short video explained how uh, owning a share of stock gives you a claim on the assets owned by that company, and including its profits earned in the future and all the things that it owns today. It's capital, if you will. But what exactly determines the value of a company stock? So when you pick a stock, you pick a stock, you pick a company that is making money. It's pretty simple. You don't pick companies that are losing money and are liable to go bankrupt. Uh, that's called a bad investment. So you pick, so the stock market, uh, and in, in a very idealized world, it's all about picking a company that's profitable, and importantly, that you think will be profitable in the future and for a long time so you buy a stock in that company and whenever they make a profit you get a share of that profit so you make money over a long period of time so the value of that stock is su supposed to reflect the profitability of that company so obviously people buy stocks for two reasons well maybe not obviously people buy stocks for two reasons first they buy stocks in order to get dividends uh, meaning to get their share of the profit earned by that company. So if you're in 10% 10, 10 of a company, you're entitled to 10% of their profits. But the second reason people buy stocks is for something called capital gains. People also buy stocks because if you buy stock and the value of that stock doubles, then you can sell it for twice what you bought it and realize a 100% capital gains. Okay, So those are, those are the two reasons. But the value is still fundamentally determined by the profitability by the profitability of the company. So uh, let's draw a really quick, simple diagram to illustrate this concept. So here's a simple graph, and on the y-axis we have money, and on the x-axis we have time. Okay. So let's assume that the blue line represents the amount of profits being earned by a company over time. So over, let's say it's a relatively successful company. Profits are incre increasing at a you know, moderate pace. So profits are going up over time. Given this profit line, you would expect the value of stock to reflect the increasing profits over time. So the value of stock would be something like the red line. You know, it would be increasing more or less, not exactly, but more or less reflecting the increasing uh, profits. So profits go up, value of stocks go up. So the value of stock might be a little bit higher or a little bit lower uh, than profits, depending on the value of all the assets owned by that company, because the stocks also entitled you 
to ownership of, of the hard assets, which have monetary value. But regardless, it's, it's about profitability uh, and expected profitability. However, the problem is uh, stock market traders cannot see into the future. In fact, no one can, arguably. Uh, so what stock market traders have is they have the ability to see a company's past profits and current profits. And they make their decisions of what a company's future profits will look like based on their past and current performance. All right, it makes sense. All right, so I hope that was fairly intuitive for everybody. Uh, but moving on, let's talk about the stock market movements. So far, so, so far we've talked about uh, stocks and individual companies. But however, there's this bigger thing called the stock market, which is just the aggregation of all of the stocks, of all the different uh, public publicly held corporations being traded on stock markets. So there's a bunch of different stock markets in the world. The New York Stock Exchange being the probably the most famous, uh, either that one or the London Stock Exchange being the most famous. Okay. Whoopsie. Okay, so what determines the value of the overall market? Well, it's pretty simple. The value of the overall market is simply the average of the value of all the stocks listed on that stock exchange. So if there's 100 different companies selling their stocks on one stock exchange, then the average value of those companies will be the average value of that market for the day. Okay, but stock markets go up and down over time. So why do stock markets go up and down over time? Uh, it's pretty simple. You know, when all the companies start to do bad, and when all the profits, on average, go down by 5%, then you will expect the overall stock market to go down by about 5%. So here's a quick graph that illustrates the movement of the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 is, a, is an index, which indexes the 500... Uh, I think 500 top companies, stock stock companies in the United States and takes an average of their value. So we can see uh, how the S&P 500 has been moving for the past three, four years, well, five years, I guess. This only goes up to 2010. So we see in 2007, we were at an all-time peak, uh, extremely high value of stocks. And then stocks have been slowly uh, but very consistently going down over time. Very consistently going down, down. This is called a recession. Sorry, I can't write very well with this uh, mouse cursor. So a, so yeah, the stocks went down as a result of the recession. Why? Well, the logic is pretty simple. If the com, if the, if the economy is in a recession, meaning people are losing jobs, no one's making money then corporate profits will be going down. And if profits are going down, then the value of stocks will also be going down. So that's one way to think about it, okay? Uh, so if you see here, value of stocks have been improving a little bit lately. And actually in the past more or less two years, value of stocks are actually doing pretty well. They're kind of up here. They're doing really well, okay? Uh, but here's something to keep in mind. Uh, something I've mentioned in class is that my mind doesn't work linearly, but the reason I don't think about things in a linear fashion is because the economy does not work in a linear fashion. So in this graph, I kind of mentioned how when the economy goes down, the stock market tends to reflect that by also going down. However, it's possible for there to be a feedback mechanism wherein when the stock market goes down, it actually pushes the rest of the economy go down. And we actually saw that in the 2007 crisis, and we saw that in the Great Depression. And we're going to understand exactly why those movements occur. Okay, so now moving on. What is a stock market bubble? So a really simple definition that I use, not necessarily the most technical definition, but the definition I find the most useful is this. So a bubble occurs when stock market traders, the people who are in, uh, engaged in the trading of stocks on a daily basis, cease to care about the underlying fundamentals. So here, underlying fundamentals means profitability or the ability to make profits in the future. So a bubble occurs when stock market traders cease to care about the underlying fundamentals and choose instead to bet on whatever stocks they think will experience rapid increases in value, which creates a system of self 
self-fulfilling prophecies. So let's uh, talk about this for a minute. Because uh, there's uh, a lot jam-packed into this definition. So under normal circumstances, ideally stock traders care about profits. They buy stocks when they think a company is going to do well and they're going to make profits. However, when you have a bubble, you get something very different. Where traders don't care about uh, long-term profitability. Instead, they're chasing short-term gains, short-term capital gains. Meaning that they don't care about uh, making dividends over the long run. Making, getting the profits from that company over the long run, they care about is the value of this stock going to double next week? And if it is, I'm going to buy it. And here's where the self-fulfilling prophecies come in. So if one stock market trader thinks that a stock, that a stock is going to double over the next six months, then he'll buy it. And he might be right, he might be right, he might be wrong. It's just a bet. It doesn't matter. But, but if, if enough people for whatever reason, if enough people think that the value of a stock is going to double, then what happens? Then a bunch of people start buying that stock, and when everyone starts buying a stock, the value of that stock starts going up, and it does double, or it does increase dramatically. So it, it can create self-fulfilling prophecies. So when everyone thinks, for example, during the dot-com the dot bubble in the 1990s, Everyone thought that any IT company was going to make a bunch of money. So every single new IT company that came out had zero profits, but the values of their stocks were doubling and tripling very rapidly. Why? Because if enough people think you're going to, that the value of your stock is going to increase, then it will increase, even if there's no profitability behind that increase. Okay, so that being said, how can we identify a stock market bubble? Hmm. How can we tell? Well... Uh, the easiest way to tell is by illustrating with a simple diagram. So it's kind of the same diagram we did earlier. So time plotted against money, or money plotted against time. So if we look at the blue line, let's say the blue line represents corporate profits. So profits go up and down, but they tend to go up on an up. They tend to go up uh, over time. That because that mirrors economic growth. When the con when the overall economy grows, pro profits grow, etc. So let's call this profit, which I call pi, which you should all be familiar with by now. <clears throat> so let's say that the red line represents the value of the stocks of these companies, the average value of the stock of these companies that we're looking at. You know, then at first the value of stocks will be, you know, following the movements in profitability, as you would expect. But when a bubble starts to starts to occur you see something you tend to see that the value of stocks increases much more rapidly than the value than profitability which is a classic telltale sign of a stock market bubble so this is a value of stocks probably should have used the text tool okay anyway so that's the value of stocks so when you see this uh then you know something's wrong and you saw exactly this situation in 1929, where yes, corporate profits were increasing, the economy was growing, okay, but it was growing at a moderate pace. But the value of stocks were increasing dramatically. Okay, so you know, looking at this line, this is where the bubble starts. So uh, there's one problem with bubbles: is that they tend to pop, and when they pop, they have a lot of economic ramifications and we're going to talk about those ramifications in the next video okay so now that we know what a bubble is and we know kind of how to how to tell when a bubble is happening why do bubbles occur so there's a couple different theories uh, in the economics literature and a lot of them focus on human psychology so there's a new er there's a new field in economics called behavioral economics no no sorry it's called uh, behavioral finance where they use the study of psychology and of human behavior to study the behavior of finance. And they have a lot of really great theories on, on psychology, and I can talk about that for a while. But also, more importantly, one of the second big reasons for stock market bubbles is a weak real economy. So real meaning 
you know, uh, the actual selling and buying of physical goods, the real economy, where people, where people have to work and produce stuff and that stuff gets sold, profits. So how does that make sense? Why would a weak real economy lead to a stock market bubble? That seems counterintuitive. So weak doesn't necessarily mean bad. It doesn't mean negative. But just kind of normal economic growth. N not robust, but like normal economic growth, maybe a little stagnant, can lead, under certain circumstances, under, in, in certain periods of history, can lead to a stock market bubble. So I want everyone to keep that in mind. Uh, to keep that in mind. And, and think about why that might lead to a stock market bubble. A few things, I'll give you a hint. Uh, part of it has to do with the distribution of wealth. And part of the reason that a weak real economy can lead to a stock market bubble has to do with uh, also financial deregulation. So de deregulation. Financial deregulation. Those are two kind of preconditions for a weak real economy to lead to a stock market bubble. And we'll be discussing that in class. Okay, I hope everyone understood the video and it was clear and we all had fun. Alright, see you guys in the next video.